Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar on Understanding Cerebral Palsy. My name is Claire Smith and I will be your host. We are joined today by our panellists Nick Mant, Physiotherapist at Flying Start Children's Therapy, Becca Toll, Special Needs Mum to Brielle, Dawn Hamilton, Special Needs Mum to Emmy and Holly Nam, Family Engagement Coordinator at the Family Fund. We will hear from Holly who is going to tell us a little bit about the Family Fund charity here in the UK and the opportunities they provide for families. Yes, I am here. Thank you, Claire. Um, yes, yeah, so um, my name's Holly um, and I work with Family Fund. Um, I'm the Family Engagement Coordinator of Family Fund. Um, so my role really is to try and engage more families with our services. Um, we work throughout the UK, so we provide grants primarily to families raising disabled children and seriously ill children and young people aged 18 and under. We um, also signpost to local and national um, organisations providing advice and support such as um, Contact Your Family. Um, we, deliver in, we deliver programmes as well um, and I'll tell you a couple of the programmes that we've got running at the moment at the end. Um, and we also deliver events and information days across the UK. So we get different organisations in the sector to come along to one place so that families can pick up different information. So they only have to go to one room to do that. So last year we helped families with just over 89,000 grants and services, and that was worth over 60 million pounds um, to families across the UK. So we've expanded a lot since the 70s when we started with three million pounds. Um, <clears throat> we are primarily government funded for these grants, which I think is really useful for families to know because um, the money is there because it's so much more expensive for families raising disabled children. Um, last year we supported just over 2,000 families raising children with cerebral palsy in the UK. I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, the grants that we provide and what different items we can provide. So <clears throat> we can provide things like um, furniture, so tables, chairs, beds, so items that directly relate to the support needs of the child. Um, we have different suppliers, so Argos would do our um, furniture, for example. We also provide technology, so iPads, laptops, computers. Um, you can see there on the photos, we do sensory toys and equipment, and that's Daisy in her sensory corner. And um, we use Learning Space as our provider for sensory toys and equipment. By far our biggest outgoing are family breaks. So we provide family breaks to Butlins and Haven holidays. Um, we also can do holidays outside the UK or different type of holiday within the UK. We would use our supplier, which is um, a travel agency called Travel by Inspire for that. So families can go on the website and find out if the holiday that they would like is available through Travel by Inspire and we should be able to provide that. Additionally, we are flexible, so we can provide, we can provide specialist items. So if there's an item that can really support the the needs of the child or young person then we would certainly consider most items and we would do our best to provide those and um, you can see on the screen um, Leon who's um, in a specially designed den in his back garden and um, that's because there was no space really in his house and he has ASD so it really helped give him his own space and help with his behavior which helped him and the rest of the family and Sean who has a family pony was unable to ride it without a special basket seat um, so we were able to provide um, that for him so that he could ride the family pony and we have provided um, a goat for a family before where a child had a milk allergy so that they could milk the goat so that shows you just how flexible we can be and we can provide animals we can provide pets like cats and dogs too so like I was saying we do um, use contracted suppliers to provide most of our grants and um, so Argos to our furniture as I was saying um, Stone to our technology we use learning space we use Euronix for um, appliances like dishwashers washing machines ovens um, we also use Atlantic trampolines for outdoor play equipment so it depends on what the family um, order as to how they would receive the item so if they received if they wanted a bed for example they would receive an Argos card and to the value of a bed and then they would redeem that in store 
or um, say they was they wanted a washing machine, then Euronix would deliver that straight to their door. Or if they ordered clothes, then we'd probably give them a high street voucher for clothes. So it does depend on what it is that families request. But where we can, we do use our suppliers and we hand pass over to our suppliers once we've awarded the family the grant. It is important to know who we can help. So we can support families who um, have permanent legal residency here in the UK. Um, and have lived here for six months or more. We ask that the primary parent or carer um, apply to us directly. So it would be the primary parent or carer of a disabled or seriously ill child or person aged 17 or under. So we can help up until the child's 18th birthday. We do help families on lower incomes primarily. So we ask that they send us evidence of being in receipt of one of the following um, benefits that you can see on the screen. Um, however, we are aware that there are some families that just don't um, make the threshold for income benefits or maybe they're entitled to them and they're not receiving them. So there is a box on the application form that a family can check if they are not in receipt of any of those benefits. And we would then just ask a little bit more about the household income. So maybe ask for to see pay slips or um, bank statements and then we can take it from there. So I would still encourage families to apply even if they're not in receipt of those benefits. So we have disability criteria too. Um, we support families who um, are raising a child with a serious illness. And by serious illness, we mean an illness that's lasting 12 months or more or is a life limiting illness. Um, a, for a disabled child, they must require a high level of support in three or more of the different areas that you can see on the board. So really, we just ask families to tell us as much information as they can about the child's condition and to pass on any reports, um, many be reports from practitioners or maybe a report from the school so that that supports what they're telling us. Um, so we're looking at these different areas, so the physical environment around them, we're looking at education, uh, maybe they're, they have any, they're on an EHC plan or they're statemented. Um, in communication, they may see a speech and language therapist or use different communication tools to help them. Um, they may um, need extra support accessing social activities. Um, we do actually fund social activities through our grant service as well. So horse riding lessons, swimming lessons, that kind of thing. It's good to know. Um, maybe they use specialist resources, so specialist resources to communicate or mobility resources. Perhaps they need extra support with personal care, so bathing and toileting, or they may need extra supervision and vigilance whilst playing in the back garden. And um, maybe they're receiving some kind of therapeutic treatment, so speech and language therapy or physiotherapy, or um, maybe they see CAMs. So it's just important, really, to be aware of those areas and to tell us as much about the child's condition as possible and to send us any documents that could support what the, the family are saying about the child's condition. That really just helps us to establish eligibility quickly. If we don't receive enough information in the application form, we do have independent assessors that are based around the UK and they can go into the family's home and um, make an assessment that way if that's okay with the family. And in with that as well, independent assessors can be there as some support for the family too. So that, that can be useful to some families. So we can help families um, every 12 months from the date that the last grant was given. So the first application form can take about um, four months maximum to process because it's a paper application form and we have to establish eligibility. Um, after that, families can apply online and it's much quicker. It can take a maximum of four to eight weeks online and families often tell me that it often doesn't take that long. Plus, if there's um, if an emergency situation arises, such as um, a fact that maybe a child has been rushed to hospital, um, we do have urgent referrers based at hospitals and a family can um, ask to be referred to us and we can turn around an application form very quickly in that respect in around 48 hours. And then we can help with things like hospital costs. So it's worth bearing us in mind in those circumstances. So the way families can apply is by downloading an application form from our website or if they select to apply for a grant, they can type in their name and address and we can send an application form out to them. And as I said before, it's really important that families can apply again online because it's just much quicker. They don't need to go through the eligibility criteria. They just need to let us know what it is that they would need that year. Um, so families can do that by using their family phone number and their email address and applying to us online. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the projects that we're running at Family Fund at the moment. So one of those is our sleep support hub. So we um, launched a website called Tired Out because families told us 
really how lack of sleep affects them. So if they, it results in significant financial, social, emotional challenges for them, but really that they didn't know what support was out there. So the sleep support hub is on the Tired Out website, and you can put in your postcode and find out if there's any sleep support available in your local area. Um, so we've partnered with a few charities um, and some of those charities can provide different sleep support workshops so you can see if they're available locally or there may be sleep practitioners or sleep counselors based at GP practices or schools so it's um, worth having a look at there's also different tips and guidance um, on our website hired out for um, supporting with lack of sleep and maybe tips around bedtime routines and night making that kind of thing there's also different research articles and different bloggers who can who give their experiences and um, tips as well which can be really useful to families our other project that we're running at the moment is digital skills so um, we provided over 13,000 um, computers tablets and um, laptops last year and families just told us they want to know more about what their iPads can do or tablets um, so we can if a family's received an iPad from us we're able to provide an Apple trainer who can um, give one-to-one -one support and let families know exactly how their iPad can support their child or young person specifically. So let them know about different features of an iPad, uh, maybe changing the swipe to a push button or different parental controls that can be really useful um, for families. We can also um, go to workshops with a group of parents, as long as there's one parent there who's received an iPad from us. So that's worth knowing about if you're part of a parent carer group, for example, and uh, maybe if one of you has received an iPad from us, get in touch with us and um, we should be able to send out a Apple training to the group to support the group provided you've all got the same device so um, you can find us online um, you can see our website there um, we're on Facebook which is a great way to see what families um, have received from us it's the way that they thank us so they often put um, photos up and they can comment and tell you about their experiences so it's worth checking us out on facebook you can also message us on facebook and twitter um, if you've got any questions if we can't answer them there we will forward you our email address or our telephone number which you can call us on um, and you can see those details online thank you very much for listening thank you so much holly that was really helpful i'm sure it was very helpful to the listeners we have on in the uk here I know we've really run over our time, but I hope that everybody found that really, really useful. As I said earlier on in the webinar, um, a copy will be sent to everybody who registered for the webinar, um, and it will also be available on the therapist section of the Firefly website shortly. If you live outside of the UK um, and you do require some help or support from charities similar to Family Fund, what you could do is post into our community forum um, and there may be some parents there who will be able to suggest some similar charities that in your area that might be able to provide help and assistance. Again, I just want to thank everyone for joining us and staying with us for today's webinar. It was a long one. We would personally like to extend our thanks to Nick, Becca, Dawn and Holly for their contribution this evening and uh, the day for Dawn. If anyone has any questions, uh, please feel free to email them to us at customer.inquiries at fireflyfriends.com and we'll respond to them as soon as possible. Um, so that just leaves me to say a Massive thank you once again and we hope you will join us for our next webinar. Bye.